All right, guys. So welcome back to another video in this series. We're going to be discussing sockets. Last time we discussed virtual bones. We'll also be discussing dynamic additives today. But we're going to start with sockets because I have not covered this and I want to cover this. So I do not recommend uh, sockets personally, but there is a way to get around this issue with latency. I will be discussing so if you see that hand right there, uh, because of the latency, it's jittering. If we get closer to it, it'll, it won't jitter as much. And I think that has something to do with performance optimizations that Unreal does automatically in the background. And so as we get farther away from it, it gets closer to the edge of our screen. You'll see it starts jittering more. Uh, that's a, an inherent problem. Uh, with sockets and the reason why is because we're using a socket location that is external from the skeletal mesh so you have a game thread and that's what all your game stuff ticks on that's where it gets updated and then we have an animation instance uh, and it runs on a separate thread which gets updated independently of the game thread and so what happens is those are not in sync and we have these latency issues. And if you turn your FPS down, as I describe here, then it'll become more obvious uh, what's happening. So this is very dependent on latency. The higher your frame rate, uh, the less uh, visible it'll be, or I should say the it won't look as bad as it does now, uh, the higher your FPS. Right here I'm showing how this would look on a different character if we were just using virtual bones as the target. You'll notice that the hands go exactly where this character's hands were. And right here, we're using sockets to correct the hand positioning, but you'll see that lagging issue, the latency issue. Now there is a way uh, around this uh, issue with latency. I found, I discovered this on my own. Uh, I was researching it because uh, one of the users on the Discord, he uh, kind of challenged me to find a procedural method for hand placement. And I did find one that worked, uh, but it does require some setup and it doesn't solve every problem. As you can clearly see here, anatomy is still getting in the way because his hand is placed properly but his arm is stretched thin, like that's as far back as it'll go. And you'll even notice a slight popping in his elbow because his arm is locked. That's, that's the, what you're seeing there is his arm locking and unlocking. Uh, in some cases, that'll be more visible than it is on this one. But let's just go ahead and get into sockets. So if we open up this, this is uh, the blueprint right here. And the first thing we're going to do is stop this. And you'll see this doesn't update on the event graph, the preview. If we open up this skeletal mesh, you'll see I have a socket right here that I created. What a lot of people will do is they'll go onto the anim graph and set this up so that the socket location is passed in here. And then they'll start the game and they'll move this around until the hand is in place. So that's how that normally works. And all I'm doing here is my effector location is in world space, and I'm just passing in that world location for where that socket is. Now, some people are under the impression uh, that if you, uh, if you translate this into bone space, that It'll fix the problem, and it actually does. So you'll see on this one, I'm just going to go ahead and show you here. I'm doing a, an event tech, and every tick, I'm having to update this uh, socket location. Every single tick. It's kind of performance heavy. It's one reason why I don't recommend uh, sockets. But I'll show you this method here that I have with sockets as virtual bones. 
In case any of you don't know how uh, you can create sockets by pressing going into your skeletal mesh and you can just right click on a bone and add socket and back here we're just getting the rifle out we're getting socket location and we're just typing in that socket name here I'm not really going to go into too much depth on this uh, if you've followed my previous videos, then I'm sure you can figure it out from there. Uh, I, like I said, I don't really recommend doing things like this. So I don't want to go into too much depth on it. If a lot of people ask me to do a proper video on this, then I will. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to briefly go over what I did here on this setup. So I'm going to open this one by right clicking editing. That's because this one is a dedicated blueprint. And I think Unreal is about to crash. Okay, it didn't crash. On this one, you'll see it is updating in real time. Um, so let's see. Ignore this stuff right here. This is just uh, the activation, deactivation stuff I got set up on all of it. We can go over here to begin play to the initialize. Actually... Yeah, so right here, this is where I'm updating the effector offset based on the socket location. So I'll only do this once. And the reason why I'm calling this and it has an envelope right here is because this is a BPI, which is a blueprint interface. So I'm passing this in to the blueprint interface so that I do not have to cast directly to that animation blueprint. And inside of here, you can see this is the blueprint interface. You can right, make these by right clicking and going to blueprint interface under blueprints. And I just have an input for the effector offset. Let's go ahead and close this stuff out. And we'll navigate over to this one. So right here on this, I have the class settings. I am implementing this blueprint interface. And then when you double click this, it'll automatically create this event for you. So when I call this event from here on this anim instance, it fires this event here and passes through uh, that effector offset. I'm doing this uh, pretty much the same way. Except you'll see that I have this effector location. I set it from here. I have it set to the effector offset variable, which we're passing in. But I have the effector location in bone space. And I have the effector target, the virtual bone handle, which is what we would normally want if we were just using the virtual bones as uh, the effector target. I've gone over that in the past videos. Like I said, if you haven't followed those videos, I suggest you go back and watch them. So we have this effector target set to the virtual bone handle, and we're adding an effector location to that. So what we're doing is we're adding this offset to the location of that virtual bone. So in order to do that, we need to translate that socket location into virtual bone space. And then we only have to apply this once uh, per animation in most cases. If your hand doesn't move from its location, uh, such as just holding the rifle, then you don't need to continuously update it. But if it's something like a reload animation, then you're probably going to want to turn to bone IK off for the left hand anyway, uh, because you're... If you try to use a virtual bone for that, it might cause problems. So, uh, mostly because whenever we use virtual bones, we're we normally have we normally have additives applied to things as well, and that's the reason why it'll be a bad idea. So, coming over here, I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, right here, you'll see this. Right here is a pure function that I created. 
and it's just x it's just returning a variable a vector and right here you'll see that i'm getting the skeletal mesh i'm getting the socket transform of that virtual bone hand l that we have set as the effector target and i'm using an inverse transform location to transform this location right here into virtual bone hand l space and so what this will output right here what it'll return it'll return uh how many units away this location is from this bone which makes it local to that virtual bone and this is the barrel socket from the rifle that's pretty much it and so i've created an offset that we can add to our effector target which is the virtual bone hand l because I have translated that from world space into virtual bone hand L space. That's basically it. So I only apply this once. In this example, I only apply it once, but you'll, you'll notice that it continues working even though I've only applied it once. So if we come back over here, you'll see it works. Of course, if you change this animation to something else where the hand is in a different position, then you might need to update that. Just keep that in mind. So anyway, for holding rifles and two-handed weapons of any kind, uh, this method should work, but it's probably going to have some issues. Uh, I can't predict all the issues because I have not used this in an advanced animation system. I just wanted to briefly go over that for you guys so that you understood what this was. Anyway, I will see you in the next video where we will discuss dynamic additives.